Hi, today we're just going to run through testing digital air mass sensors with the GMTO scope. Um, this waveform that's in front of you is, is, is from the ATIS information system and it's just showing the older type analog sensor. As you can see, it's just an, an, an analog out, output voltage from the sensor varying from depending on make and model from around 1.2 to maybe 4.2 and 4.6 volts. Um, and these type sensors were easy enough to test and easy enough to interpret the reading because um, the, the, the maximum output range was generally in or around the same for all vehicles. Um, uh, the digital air mass sensors, the output signal from the sensor is not an analog voltage anymore, it's a variant frequency signal. So what they have in, in one of their presets here in the ATIS software, just go in here, is where they will convert a frequency measurement into a, a straight line that we're, we're more used to interpreting. Or, or it's a better way for us to visualize it because of being used to looking at the older type analog sensors. So in this preset here, then we're just, we're only using one channel connected to the, connected to the car. management system so in this generic preset then when, when we run the scope we can see sorry I just changed the scale on this a little bit to use up a bit more of the screen um, the, the output signal from digital sensors can vary some of them switch from 0 to 12 volts some from 0 to 5 volts this one is just switching from zero to five, so we'll just change our range here a bit, or put to six. Now we're using a bit more of the screen. So here we're just measuring, measuring the, the actual signal from the sensor. Um, and the so voltage scale is from zero to six volts. Then on this line here is measuring the actual frequency of the signal, the pulses per second of the, of the signal. And then on the side scale in here we have uh, we, we have our, our hertz reading and also we have a, a nice little meter displayed here that we can make oops sorry that we can make bigger or smaller or drag it wherever we want around the screen so you get the idea on that So we'll just uh, accelerate and uh, the sensor on this vehicle, the frequency output goes down when you accelerate the engine. So you'll see here it go from about 4.2 down to about 2 point something when we accelerate on the floor. Now not all of them are like this, some, some other brands then they work the opposite way around, they go from maybe about 2.5 up to six or seven thousand hertz when, when we accelerate. If we want to there we can just zoom in on the on the signal here a bit as well all sort of view it. So this is a nice little feature, a nice way of testing this type of sensor, a nice way of, of visualizing it. Um, in this preset then we're doing it over a relatively short time, time base. So um, we had a problem with this vehicle where it was uh, hesitating or choking when low down in the revs when you start to accelerate. So you'd accelerate away in second you went to tour gear, put the foot down, should give one or two chucks and then pull on and, and go relatively okay once it had built up in the revs so we wasn't actually sure 
uh, we were using, had the diagnostics on it and with the diagnostics we had, we had no fall codes logged and we were trying to watch fuel pressure boost, boost pressure air mass sensor signal in the data stream on the diagnostic tool so I had someone driving the car I was trying to view these readings to, to see which one was dropping out or which one was was it the boost was slow building up or dropping away for a, sec a second or was it the fuel pressure or was it the air mass sensor so what we've done we've, we've done up this preset herself and we, we were measuring the air mass sensor um, we were measuring boost pressure and fuel pressure so then we drove the vehicle and we could we, we could see then that the boost was holding okay when the vehicle hesitated the fuel pressure was okay but it was actually the air mass signal was dropping away so now in this one we, we don't have the boost or fuel pressure channels up here at the moment but that's, that's the way we did do it earlier on to, to narrow it down to the air mass sensor so when we, when we got the vehicle fixed then we thought it would be a good idea just to capture a known good for this car because with, with digital air mass sensors it's very hard to say there's no kind of fixed range that you can say every make and model work to so it's nice to capture a few a few known good ones from different vehicles to get some sort of an idea how they should work so and you can see in this case then we have it running over over a, a longer time period of about 35 seconds uh, length, uh, total length across the screen so I'll just turn off a reference here This is a slightly better way again to, again to view it because when we were looking at it in the earlier preset we were just seeing the, the frequency line moving up and down the screen or this way we can we can actually see the, the total range that it's, it's going to. Uh, of course we can use our cursors then to, to take measurements and all or we can just monitor it here. Yeah, so we can monitor it here or we can look across let me just turn off the cursors you can look across to the scale and on the right so that we can see it went from a little under 5,000 down to about a little under 2,500 2, um, note that this, this is only revving the vehicle on the floor it probably would have went lower if we had it out on the road under full load but like I think even this test doing it on the floor is, is, is a good enough test if, if it hits these targets from a known good vehicle everything should be pretty pretty okay um, it's just we have to with, with, with testing air mass sensors like this or even the data stream in our diagnostic tool there's so many other factors that can affect it like a, a leaks a problems with EGR valves boost leaks restrictions in the exhaust system restrictions in intake basically anything that will affect the kind of volumetric efficiency of the engine will affect the air mass sensor readings so if this reading is wrong or not matching up it doesn't necessarily mean it's the air mass sensor it can be can be several other things the actual problem on this vehicle was before it was a pretty simple fix and then um, and when we, when we knew her, her, which area to go to, we knew the problem was in the area of the air mass sensor. We removed the air mass sensor and we noticed a lot of dirt and dust on the sensor. So um, then, obviously, that pointed straight to the airflow meter. It had to be getting by somehow. But the, it seemed like this was getting sucked in against the intake to the air mass sensor. So possibly when we were accelerating, this was restricting or sucking it in and the vehicle was hesitating or chucking and once it got going then it, it might have relaxed from it 
because this car was driving relatively okay once you got up in the ribs a bit and got up in the gears and then moving on, it was going pretty okay. So, yeah, that's that. So, yeah, I'll just, uh, just turn our reference back on and I'll just take away the signal here again. So yeah, so now then going forward, the next time we have one in with this issue, uh, we have a known good reference. When I done the last test there a second ago, I removed the reference. You can just turn it on and off here. But uh, this time I'll just run it and just leave it on and we'll just try match along with the, if I can accelerate at the right time. Now. Bit slow there at accelerating, but you don't even have to try match it, you, you get the idea. So, yep, yeah, that's great. So, then this reference, then we, we, we just saved it here on our desktop as a Nissan Qashqai 1.5 DCI. Airflow, air mass known good, and we were able to add all these different comments here on the screen. We could have added a lot more comments up here if we wanted to. And we said we, we also could have had a lot more channels on here, but we just wanted to, to save this one. So that's that's about it. Like I said, it's only one one channel taking the measurement and then the scope software is converting this frequency signal this signal into a frequency line and we have our scale in here and here so we said this is the type where you accelerate the frequency goes down and um, just seeking to find the car here now with the other type where when you accelerate the frequency goes up. So now uh, we found uh, another car here that we can test and it has the opposite type digital air mass sensor to the Nissan Qashqai we were testing. And again we're just connected up with one one channel on today. This car is a 2017 Volvo V60D2. Uh, two liter diesel and it has seems to have a, a Denso common rail system. So again, this is our reference from the Nissan. We'll just run it here just to show the differences in it. So on this one it's at about 3500 kilohertz at idle and when we accelerate it's going up, up instead of down. Uh, can't seem to get this to rev any higher than this on the floor. It seems to be limited with limited there and can't rev it anymore on the floor. So I'm just going to turn off this reference for a minute and just restart it again. run it again and I'll give it a Either it was going from about 3.2 up to about 5.5 on the floor. I'd imagine if we had this out on the road under full load and we're scoping it, it'd probably go to seven or eight thousand kilohertz. So what we can do now, even though we're in on the Kashkai um, reference that we already created, I can adjust these a little bit to 
match up to this one. And then I can update the, the, the references. Just check now, so I'm not turning the reference on or off there, it's overlaying that one exactly. So now what I can do is, I just need to make sure if I go save, I'm just going to overwrite my Qashqai one, so I'll go save as. Let's put the phone down here for a sec. So yeah, I'm just saving it then as 2017 Volvo S62 Lurty D4 Air Mass Known Good Desktop Save. And just close out all this so we still have our, our cash kai one reference go back into this one Again, zoom in on the signal if we want. On zoom. So yeah, um, that's basically it. This one just works the other way around. Goes from about 3,000 up to five or six. But again, I'd say if we could get the rev harder on the floor, it'd probably go to more like seven or 8,000. Um, so yeah, the few others we've tested, some of the BMW diesels seem to work in a similar range to this. So probably if we start checking more of them, we'd, just, we'd get a feeling or a, a general guide to do you know, certain makes and models. Um, so that's about it. Thanks. Thanks for watching.